During development, mesenchymal neural crest cells delaminate from the neural tube and collectively migrate in streams towards distant locations within the embryo. Spatial confinement enhances collective cell migration in vitro, but whether it promotes collective migration in vivo is unclear. Roberto Mayor from University College London says that in order to test whether confinement plays a role in neural crest migration, his team needed to identify an extracellular matrix protein that could potentially restrict neural crest cell movement. So we found this vesican molecule that has a very long history in, in the neural crest field and some people propose that Versican was an inhibitor of neural crest migration and other people uh, published that Versican was required for neural crest migration. And for us, that was the ideal candidate because a molecule involved in confinement should be an inhibitor of neural crest migration, but at the same time, it should allow directional migration. Mayor and colleagues, led by postdocs Andreas Tsabo and Manuela Melchionda, found that, as previously seen in chicken and mouse embryos, Versican is expressed in the tissues surrounding the neural crest cells of Xenopus embryos. We culture neural crest cells in vitro, in a condition where they were cultured just on fibronectin, or in another condition where the neural crests were exposed to a region of the petri dish that was covered with fibronectin and versican. And we found that while the neural crest culture in, on fibronectin, they could move all over the dish, the cells culture in the versican substrate stopped migrating when they reached that border of the versican confirming what was already published, that Versican was an inhibitor of neural crest migration. Yet knocking down Versican in developing frog embryos impaired neural crest migration, a series of grafting experiments demonstrating that Versican is required in the tissues surrounding the neural crest cells rather than in the neural crest cells themselves. So if you add the molecule, like in the vitro experiment, you stop migration, but if you remove the molecule, you also stop migration. And this was consistent with the idea that uh, confinement could be the explanation for the role of Versican. So to test that, we decided to develop a mathematical modeling of neural crest migration, where we put all the cellular activities that were already known to be involved in controlling neural crest migration. And in silico, when we removed the confinement, when we had a simulation that didn't have confinement, the neural crest still continued migrating, but not in a directional manner. So the confinement seemed to be required in silico for the directional migration of the neural crest cell. So we compared that with the in vivo data by doing time-lapse movies of embryos in which the neural crest were fluorescently labeled, and the data fit perfectly. So in the control case, you have a very directional migration. But when we remove the versican in vivo, the directionality was very much reduced in the same way in which the in silico reproduced the migration without confinement. So in other words, confinement in silico is equivalent to the presence of versican. In vivo. Versican is therefore required to confine neural crest cells and promote their directional migration. But is the extracellular matrix molecule sufficient to direct the neural crest collective movement? So in order to test for the sufficiency, we cultured the neural crest in vitro and we generated confinement of these cells by culturing the cells in a lane that was surrounded by versican. And what happened was the cells that, without confinement, just migrate randomly, they start to migrate as a cluster, as a collective, in a directional manner, just controlled by the presence of Versican at the border. And this was again confirmed in silico by reproducing the confinement in the modeling of, of neural crest cells. Though the collective migration of neural crest cells is conserved across species, 
the width and size of the migratory streams varies tremendously. So in our model, we simulated different widths for different numbers of cells, and we found that there is an optimal number of cells for a given width. So, for example, if we have a stream of 50 cells and you start to increase the width, you see an increase in the efficiency of migration. I mean, the cells migrate faster and more efficiently. But if you increase the width too much, then the efficiency of migration is reduced. So basically, this says that there is an optimal number of cells for a given width of confinement. And we found that there is a very good correlation between what the model predicts as an optimal and the real numbers that are found in the real world. So this really suggests that during evolution, the number of cells is selected for a specific width of the stream. Mayuro and colleagues now want to investigate how Versican impedes neural crest cell movement and to explore the role of other inhibitory molecules such as efferins and semaphorins. And the other thing that is a longer term question is how conserved is this uh, mechanism for other situations where you have collective migration, like, for example, uh, invasion of cancer cells during metastasis. There are evidence that confinement also play a role in those cells, but the question is, is Versican also involved in the confinement of cancer cells during metastasis? I mean, these are the questions that we can ask for the future. For now, though, you can learn more about how in vivo confinement promotes the collective migration of neural crest cells in the paper by Tsabo Melchiondo et al., published in the June 6, 2016 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.